This is a follow-up to the Pythagorean Theorem lesson. You should already have viewed the Pythagorean Theorem lesson before looking at this lesson. If not, exit out, go back to the original. Right. Pythagorean follow-up. By now, we should know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That is the Pythagorean Theorem, and that helps you find missing lengths of a right triangle. Remember, this only applies to right triangles. A and B are legs of the triangle. They're the ones attached to the 90 degree angle, and C is the one that's opposite, or the one that's not attached to the 90 degree angle, C being the hypotenuse. When asked to solve for a missing length of a triangle, you have two basic scenarios. Scenario one, you're given both legs, and you're looking for the hypotenuse. Scenario two, you're given the hypotenuse and one of the legs. There's also another type of question you might be asked. You could also be given three lengths and asked to determine if they can form a right triangle. Again, you would be using the Pythagorean theorem to solve those types of questions. Scenario one. Here we are given two legs. And one was five, one was 12. We need to find the hypotenuse. So we use the Pythagorean theorem. We plug in our numbers. A is 12, so we square that. B is 5, we square that. And C squared, we don't know what it is, so it stays C squared. 12 squared is 144, that's 12 times 12. 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. Then we add the two together. 144 and 25 gives me 169. Now remember, as we learned from the last lesson, the last step in solving the Pythagorean theorem here is to square root both sides. You've got to do the square root of 169 and the square root of c squared. The square root of 169 is 13. And the square root of c squared is c. So the steps that I followed to solve scenario one was to square both numbers I'm given, add them together, and then do the square root to find the final answer. That's what you're doing when you're given two legs. Here we have scenario two, where we are given a leg and the hypotenuse. Excuse me while I correct some drawing there. Again, we're going to plug these into the Pythagorean theorem. This time, we do not know what a is, so it stays as a squared. b is 6 squared. And that's going to be equal to 10 squared, the hypotenuse squared. 6 squared is 36. 10 squared is 100. We still have to carry down that a squared because we don't know what it is. Now at this point, it's different from my last scenario because the numbers are not on the same side of the equal sign. So in order to get them together, I have to do that opposite operation to get it to the other side. So instead of adding 36, I'm subtracting 36, which means I'm going to end up with a squared on this side and 64 on this side. And of course, the final step in solving, square root, which gives me a equals 8. So in scenario 2, I squared both numbers I was given, subtracted the smaller one from the larger one, and did the square root to solve. Very similar to scenario 1. The only difference was the middle step. Instead of adding the two numbers, I subtracted the smaller one from the larger one before doing the square root. So scenario one, when you're, given, when you're not given the hypotenuse, you square the two numbers and add them. Scenario two, you square both numbers, subtract the smaller from the larger. Both scenarios, you do the square root to get your final answer. Now, I want you to take a moment, pause the video, and on a piece of paper, Try these two problems. Remember, you may have to turn this in tomorrow, so make sure you have your name, date, and period number on it. All right, so pause the video now and try these problems on your own. Hey, welcome back. Let's see how you did. 
you're given these numbers, and you're asked, well, first of all, which scenario is this? Well, I've got the hypotenuse there. It's the one opposite the 90 degree angle, so this must be a scenario two, which means I'm going to have a squared plus, I do have the b, and I do have my c, which is five squared. Three squared is nine. Five squared is 25, and the a squared gets carried down because we do not know what a is. And again, we're going to do the opposite operation to solve here. We are subtracting, and you get a squared is equal to 16. And what's that final step again? You got it, square root. So we get a is equal to 4. And that would be my final answer. Second problem here, which scenario do we have? That's right, scenario one, which means I'm going to be adding the two numbers together. We're going to have 12 squared plus 16 squared is equal to c squared. 12 squared is 144. 16 squared is 256. Don't worry, you can use your calculator to do that. Add them together and you're going to get 400 equals c squared. Am I done? That's right, I gotta do the square root here. So I get 20 is equal to C, and that is my final answer for that one. Hopefully you guys did well on that. Moving on. In this particular problem, we are given three numbers, and we're asked why to, to figure out whether those three lines can form a right triangle. The steps in doing that are, identify the hypotenuse. Of course, in this case, the hypotenuse, oh, in every case, the hypotenuse is always the largest side, so it's always going to be the largest number. So it would be 15. Step two, plug in all of the numbers into the theorem. Since we know that this is the C, it's going to be on the one side the equal sign by itself, the other two numbers, it doesn't matter what order I put them in, but they're being added to get squared and added together on this side. Step three, simplify both sides of the equation, which means I'm going to actually square both of those. That gives me 81 plus 144. 15 squared is going to give me 225. I'm not completely simplified yet because I still have to add these two numbers. When I add them together, I get 225 equals 225. Last step is to compare. Are both sides the same? Well, in this case, yes, they are. If they're both the same, then yes, these three numbers, these three lengths, do form a right triangle. If they did not, my answer would be no. They are not, they do not form a right triangle. But they do are the same, so we do indeed have a right triangle there. At this point, yeah, you got it. I want you to pause the video and do these two problems on that same piece of paper you were working on earlier. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. All right, which one's the largest number here? The largest number is the 10. So it's going to be on the one side the equal sign by itself. The other two I square on this side and add together. 4 squared is 16. 8 squared is 64. 110 squared is 100. Add these together. And I get 70, 80. I get 80 equal to 100. When I compare those, are they equal? No. So this is not a right triangle. Let's look at the last one here. Which one's the largest number? The 15. So the 15 is going to be on one side, the equal sign by itself being squared. The other side gets the other two numbers squared and added together. 9 squared is 81. 12 squared is 144. 
15 squared is 225. 81 and 144 added together gives me 225, which does equal 225. And since that is, they are equal, then yes, they do form a right triangle. Hopefully, you got it all correct. If not, rewind, take another look at the video again, see what you missed.